All right, gang, let's dive right into it. Welcome to webinar Thursday, actually, today. Thanks for joining us. Tips to grow your online community. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. I'm Jason there on the left, and we're lucky to be joined by Rick and David today in today's webinar. Rick is one of the support specialists here at Brilliant Directories. Many of you have probably emailed or have done phone training with Rick. Uh, Rick, thank you for joining the webinar. Hey, Jason. Hello. Hello, guys. Happy to be here again. Looking forward to this webinar. Awesome. And David is uh, the digital strategist here at Brilliant Directories. He uh, helps a lot of uh, our users, helping setting up their online communities, as well as helping us here at Brilliant Directories to uh, put on these webinars and getting the webinar replays uh, back to you in the Facebook group and in the community. So, Dave, thanks for joining us here as well. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on this webinar Thursday, and happy opening day to all you baseball fans out there. Yeah. All right. I always like to mention, if you're not already a member of our Facebook group, we invite you to join us there. You can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook, and you can click on the join link. I'm going to assume most of us here are already part of that Facebook group. It's a great place to continue the conversations in between webinars. Um, I participate in there myself. There's some great questions in there and a lot of support from the BD uh, community. So feel free to go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook and join us there after the webinars. And I always like to mention for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. It's great to be with you here today. Webinar Wednesday is a great venue and a great place to sharpen our marketing skills to grow our membership community. So some of the topics we like to discuss in Webinar Wednesdays uh, are ideas to convert website visitors into maybe free or paying members, uh, finding ways to increase your website traffic. We've covered uh, SEO quite a bit in the webinars, how to add keywords to your homepage and other internal pages of your site and other strategies that you can employ. Uh, some fun things are identifying revenue opportunities, uh, even identifying who your audiences are and what type of content you should be um, uh, displaying for them. So those all go into uh, marketing your site and packaging your site to be a nice product for the niche and the target market that you're serving. So if you have questions about your site, maybe you're in the setup phase, maybe your site has been online and you've plateaued and you're looking for new ideas, uh, please save those questions. We'll be getting to them soon. And Patrick uh, joins us very often in the webinars. He is not uh, in, in the webinar today, uh, but there was a lot of buildup and uh, they finally released their free masterclass uh, training. I think it's a three or four part series. And um, we invite you all to check it out. It's, it's a free masterclass. It's amazing tips on how to really define what the product is that you're selling uh, in the market you're trying to target. I'm going to go to the directorygurus.com uh, website just so we can kind of check it out a bit. And uh, David, you actually uh, joined in and watched uh, the masterclass that they offered. Can you tell us a little bit about what it included? Yeah, it's uh, so the masterclass video. It's available for free. It's uh, I think it was 36 minutes. It was I think it was five parts, and they really hammered home the entire process from first initially defining your product all the way through uh, running campaigns and really growing your membership community and generating additional revenue through uh, other avenues. So I figured I'd, since Patrick's not with us, I would just run through those uh, those sections real quick. The first part, defining your product, they really hammered home the point that you got to determine what your target audience is first. And then from there, it's usually not a bad idea to actually cut that target audience down in size a little bit to really hone in on the supply and demand element of your business and finding the true niche that you're going to be filling. From there, you move on to a proof of concept uh, so you get, you know, just a bare bones general foundation of a website live. You can reach out to some of those people in the target audience to get their feedback. And then from there, based on that feedback, you can decide whether or not you're ready to actually move forward and, and go to market with your website. Or if you need to revisit your proof of concept based on the feedback that you receive, maybe edit a few things, change some things up, uh, and then you can go back into the getting feedback stage and kind of repeat that cycle until you're ready to go to market. After that, the business structure, one of the great points they 
they really bring to light in this this video is when you're starting a directory website for 99% of you you know it's a business your goal is to is to make some money with this thing so you got to think of it as a business and so they go through the business structure of Bruce's website Yoga Alliance Professionals um, you know he's generated over seven figures now with uh, his brilliant directory site which is a directory for yoga professionals and so with the business structure element of of this video they talk about the different tasks that need to be handled by your team or if you're just an individual entrepreneur running your site then like all entrepreneurs they talk about the different hats that you're going to need to wear um, in in terms of managing the day-to-day elements of the directory as well as growing the directory dave i have a question for you the proof of concept stage that's basically getting your initial idea online right yeah just the bare bones foundational website um nothing too fancy but getting just getting the essentials out there and then allowing members of your target audience reaching out to them telling them about your website and then getting their feedback letting them know that you know it's not ready to go to market yet but if they have any feedback you know we'd greatly appreciate it and based on that feedback you can um you can kind of chisel out any additional features or or elements of the website that that need to be corrected interesting because i see when people are first setting up their site they actually like spend a lot of time hoping that everything is like picture and pixel perfect and and that they've anything that, that they could ever think of for the business in the website is is set up first before they kind of like release it to the public so i'm, I'm assuming that with the and I haven't watched this yet, but with the proof of concept, it's kind of the opposite. You want to get something up that's presentable, but it's still it's it's online quickly. So rather than investing so much time, you just get something basic online and then use the feedback to continue to continue to make more changes, rather than trying to assume everything that needs to be set up from the start. Yeah, right? exactly. Because the goal of this proof of concept is to get that feedback. Um, so all you want is just enough to to let the people testing your proof of concept understand really what the website's meant for, what they're supposed to be getting out of it. And if they want to get anything else out of it, that's already not included. So by getting this proof of concept going and getting the feedback, instead of hoping you have all of the right elements on your website before you launch, you're almost guaranteeing that you do have all of the essential elements of your website ready at launch. You know, and I just want one more point about that it's almost like a soft opening for a website you know like restaurants have grand openings well before that grand opening they did a soft opening uh you know to kind of stress test the things get get feedback on the menu and then before they finalize it with the big with you know with the big marketing push so um i like this so it's it's teaching it's kind of recommending to be quick and nimble rather than going all in when you're when you're doing the initial setup of your site yeah exactly soft opening is the perfect example or the perfect analogy for it. Um, And actually what I found really interesting is Bruce talked about in the video a little bit of how they used this entire six point timeline or formula uh, for the directory gurus. And he delved in a little bit to the directory gurus initial proof of concept and then how they got feedback from all of you who are with us in the webinar. Um, got all your feedback, what you wanted to get out of the course. And from there, they actually needed to go back to the drawing board a little bit, recreate this series. And so that's how they knew when uh, it was time for them to launch, they had all of those essential elements put in place that their target audience, you, the directory website owners, wanted to receive out of this. That's really good. That's a really smart way to kind of approach it, especially when you're first setting up your site. You know, what is the What do they mean by the directory equation? What do they cover in that section? They used a really good example in there is in that all directory websites, for the most part, have two users, essentially. You have the professionals, and then you also have just the general users. It's like with Yelp. You have the business owners, and then you have the customers. So it's, a, so it's like a marketplace, like Uber has the drivers and the riders. Exactly. And so a lot of times people aren't sure how to get started. They don't know which one of those two groups to go after first. Do you go after the customer? Do you go after the business owner or the professional? And Bruce dives into it a little bit more in in the video, but essentially you just got to pick one. You got to roll out, you know, maybe one or two 
uh, simple marketing campaigns or email campaigns, ideally, get them on board. And then once they're on board, the other half of that equation should naturally follow suit. I've, I've noticed through the years when people are starting their directories, they, they kind of get, they freeze a little bit. They're like, well, why are people going to come to my site if I don't have any members? Why are members going to like join my site, like professionals, if I don't have any visitors coming to my site? And it's just this this conversation of what came first, the chicken or the egg. Um, but I, th- I think that's a great, I mean, he probably talks about it in more detail, but just picking one and getting it established and then the other side of the marketplace will follow in a secondary um, marketing campaign. Yeah, well, I mean, even the the proof of concept element of this plays into that directory equation also because gotcha. part of that proof of concept is getting the feedback. And so if you're receiving feedback, or at least if you're reaching out to people for feedback, you already have some people who ideally might be interested in joining your website. So those might be the people that you want to reach out to first once you're past the proof of concept phase and you're ready to launch and go to market with the site. Gotcha. What are the last two, just uh, real quick, uh, campaigns and the blueprint? Yeah, so campaigns, uh, they talk, They basically ran through the basics of uh, how to run marketing campaigns to grow your membership community and continue generating revenue. So they talked about some email templates, uh, landing pages, all that sort of essential stuff that goes into running a successful marketing campaign. So kind of like actionable item, like actionable steps that people should take to to actually get the ball rolling in re- in outreach. Yeah, they didn't go they didn't go into too much detail about specifics for for like email campaigns or landing pages. They didn't give any examples, but they did discuss it and then I believe they I'm sure they have some other resources on their site that go into that element of this entire blueprint. And that goes into the sixth point. The blueprint is basically just this entire process put into, I think it was like a nine point um, timeline. And you kind of just run through it, check off all of those things. And so, like I mentioned, you know, it starts off with defining the product, initially figuring out who your target audience is, and then it goes all the way through to the end, which is rolling out marketing campaigns to continue to grow your membership community, and then to generate additional revenue through different avenues that you may not have initially um, included with your site or maybe that you didn't even think of. And it was your members, your target audience, who actually brought those potential revenue generation opportunities to you. So they they really cover all the bases. I've worked with hundreds of directory sites now, and I was impressed. I I picked up uh, one or two really good, useful tips from them. So I highly recommend it, and it's free. It's 36 minutes. You can sit down and, you know, before bed or something, and and watch Bruce guide you through the whole process. All right. Well, thanks for that uh, synopsis and summary of uh, the video. You guys can go to directorygurus.com. I think you just got to put your email in, and then you get direct access uh, to the entire uh, free video series that they have right now. That's correct. All right. And we always wanted to keep this slide in uh, the webinars. Just a reminder, don't get stuck on the hamster wheel. And I think with that six-step program that we just outlined is a great example of how to continuously move through different steps of growing and operating your business, whether it's research and development or uh, email marketing or getting feedback from your users or even designing your site. Just make sure that you're giving an equal amount of time to the different um, elements that are required to keep your business growing, to always uh, create traction and forward progress and movement. Uh, So just always remember to keep moving and don't get stuck on one aspect of the business. All right, we were able to fit this on one slide. We were thinking about uh, doing two slides, but we have some BD Lab updates to share with you guys today. Um, A lot of these are just settings based, so we're gonna show you where some new uh, settings are. And I'll actually start at the bottom here. We have some add-ons coming soon. Uh, The bookmark counter, it will actually show how many uh, likes or bookmarks a specific post or member profile has received. So, uh, you know, if, uh, somebody has liked a blog post 20 times or, well, I mean, if, if a blog post has received 20 bookmarks uh, from various visitors on your site, it'll show that count. Uh, very similar to how Facebook shows how many uh, dis- uh, likes a discussion or comment has received. So that's a great way to show more activity on your site. Uh, report this page. We covered that in the previous webinar with a demo that should be coming out shortly, allowing people to flag 
uh, pages on your site that might have inappropriate content. And this one's been going back and forth in QA a few times. We're just trying to make sure we get it right. The ability to sell digital downloads. Basically, it's a way to sell products that are not membership levels on your site. So uh, you don't have to create a membership level product to sell an alternative product on your site. So maybe you have additional services or you want to make a, a product so people can buy banner ad space or SEO services or whatever else you want to sell to people that are non-membership levels. Uh, this add-on is going to allow you to do that and also nicely organize who's buying which products as well. Uh, so we'll start at the top here now we'll move back up, um, show you some of these uh, lab updates. We'll start with the one for more control for member post limits. So there is an add-on where you can set the limit of how many free posts uh, your members can publish. So if you can, if you are allowing your members to publish coupons, for example, you can limit it to, let's say, five, and then the member won't be able to publish more than five. There are some new additional settings around this right now, and I'll show you exactly where they are. So if you go on over to your dashboard, and we're going to go to the Finance tab, Manage Products, and this is related to post-publishing settings. So we'll, we'll edit this silver plan here as a, as a sample, and we'll toggle on over to post publishing. Now here, because we have the post limit um, add-on enabled, we now have this nifty drop-down here. And I'll show you, uh, I'll explain exactly what these three options do. I'll start at the bottom here again. So there's three options here. Um, let's talk about community articles. So you can set this so these members only get to publish free posts and no paid posts. So why is that valuable? Um, well, if it's set to zero, they can publish unlimited posts. So there's no limit as to how many, in this example, community articles they can publish. But if we set this to five, now they can only publish uh, five free posts total. And even if they wanted to pay for posts for additional posts, they won't be able to do so. They're just limited to five total free posts. So if you really want to uh, just contain the amount of content uh, this membership level can produce, uh, this is a good way to do it. Let's go to the next one, which is only paid posts, no free posts. So uh, the member's not going to be able to publish any free posts, uh, or in this case, community articles, and you can set the price uh, per post that they want to publish. So even the first post here will be $10, second post will be $10, and so on and so forth. There are no uh, free ways to publish posts on a site uh, with this setting. And then the top option here are free and paid posts. So this is going to be like a hybrid of the two. Uh, so for example, maybe you want to allow the members to publish three free posts first, and then the, any posts after that will be paid posts. So uh, the fourth post would be $10, and then the fifth post would be $10, another $10, and so on. So uh, the member gets uh, a certain number of free posts, and then they have to pay for extra posts. So this is nice uh, little options here to give you more control over how members uh, can publish content. Uh, this is a, a simple one here. It's the ability to hide and actually choose the pagination you want uh, on on your search results. Let me see if I can get an example for you here. So let's go to the search results here. And this is just some experimental stuff we're working on. We might talk about that. So pagination is this. So in this case, we're using the InstaLoad search results, which is this button. And you can click to get more results. This is awesome for when people are on mobile devices so that it doesn't have to reload the, and go to like page two and page three. So this is one of the options. Now let me show you in the settings that we just talked about um, where you can hide and control what type of pagination you'd like to use. So for this, we'll go to content and edit post settings. And we can have different rules for different types of posts. Uh, in this case, let's stick with the member search results. So I'll go to the, the listings, click on edit. And the option for this is going to be in the search results design tab. And it's right over here. So as you know, you can choose how many results per page you want to show. In this case, we're showing nine results per page. And then you have to 
click to go to, to view more results with the Insta load search results. Um, or let me put the standard pagination back. This is the one we're all used to. This is the option here, pagination display options. There's three options here. I'm going to set it to standard. And this is what we're all familiar with. I'll go ahead and refresh the search results page. I'll scroll all the way back up. Let's do another open search here. All right, so now if I scroll down, so now this is what we're used to. This is the numbers here, one, two, uh, and so forth, three and four. And the insta load we just saw an example of, that's when you get the button, and rather than going to page one, two, two three, and four, it just on that same page um, displays more results. In this case, it would be nine results at a time would get uh, displayed every time you click that button. Uh, now this is the the one that's more new. It's hiding the pagination, and this is there's a rare cases where you'll want to do this. Most likely you don't want to do this, um, but let's click on search here now. And what happens is there is no pagination, um, and what we've seen is when when people want to do this. Um, maybe you have a best of site, so like top 100 lawyers or like top 15 restaurants in a certain category. So although you might have more, um, you know, let's say you have a thousand uh, lawyers or a thousand restaurants, the visitor of your site would will only see the top 15 based on their search. So that would be based on the membership level uh, prior search priority, um, or it could be how they're sorting, um, you know, by most reviews. Uh, and things like that. And what I've seen a lot of people do by hiding the pagination is you kind of limit the results and a small customization, nothing nothing major, is they'll add their lead form at the end of the short result. So maybe they provide three or five results and as a strategy they want to capture and generate leads and they'll say, want to get matched with more professionals, fill out the form below. So you provide them with a little teaser of results and then you put the lead form um, there or a button to your to your lead landing page, uh, and it's a strategy to uh, to gather and capture uh, more leads on your website. Um, so those are some fun options there, just giving you a little bit more design control over uh, kind of the functionality of your site in the search results. All right, uh, this is a nice one. It's now we have the ability to enable and disable banner ads when a member is logged in to their dashboard. And let me show you exactly what that's referring to. Um, I'm logged into here as this member. Let me just click on edit listing. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this member is now logged in to their dashboard area and it's nice and clean. It's not cluttered with banner ads. Um, now you have the ability to enable or disable banner ads here specifically. And let me show you uh, where you can do that. So let me go back to the dashboard area. And the benefit for this is maybe your free members, you kind of annoy them with some of those banner ads, uh, and then your paying members have a nice, clean, sanitary environment uh, in their member dashboard without um, any banner ads. Maybe for general users, they have banner ads in their member dashboard area. Uh, and then also, it's just an additional place to, to display more banner ads. Um, so now you have that control. So where you enable and disable that is also going to be a manage products setting. So we'll go to manage products. And we want to edit one of the membership levels and select the rule for if banner ads show in their dashboard or not. So we're going to do the basic membership level for right now. I think that's the member we're editing. Yep, they're a basic level. And we're going to toggle on over to additional settings. And this will be one of the member dashboard settings. So we just scroll down here. And here's the option here, show banner ads in dashboard. I'll just go ahead and set this to yes, and I'll save the changes. Okay, great. So this is set to yes. So now if I refresh the page here, so we can see now at the top here, the, the member has a banner ad and probably at the footer. Uh, so wherever you've added banner ads in your design settings, uh, they'll kind of show up here in the member's uh, dashboard area. So again, a good strategy here is uh, potentially your your paying members you, you don't want to bombard them with ads in their dashboard and maybe general users or free members if you want uh, you can display ads there uh, and also don't forget they don't have to be these kind of Google ads 
Uh, they can be ads that kind of promote other aspects of your website. They could be upgrade banner ads or learn about what, what comes with the pro, uh, like a pro level or higher tiered membership level on your site. So they don't have to be annoying banner ads. They could be proactive ones that kind of uh, encourage more engagement from users on your site. All right, keep things moving here. Uh, this one, uh, the fourth option here, no tabs on member profile pages. This actually was a webinar Wednesday request, and a lot of people were talking about it uh, in the Facebook group. It's now a simple design setting, and I'll show you exactly how it works. Uh, so let's actually go to uh, this person's profile. And I think I've already enabled it. Um, yes, let's disable the setting first. So I'll show you where you can turn this on and off and also what I'm referring to. Right now I have it in, in, the, in the Don't Show Tabs uh, uh, position. So let me revert that back to what we're all used to. So you can go to your design settings. And I believe it's under additional design settings. And there is a new option here, member profile tabs. Uh, so I'll just set it to the default here, show content in separate tabs. And that's what we're all familiar with. When we come to the members profile page, uh, we kind of see the different sections here. In this case, this member has two tabs. So they have their overview tab and their blog articles tab. Um, and th th it's nice. It's nicely separated. Uh, there is a small SEO value to uh, displaying all the content at once. That's where the benefit of this uh comes in. Also, it just depends on exactly what's on the profile pages and kind of what the design and flow of your website is. Maybe the, you don't like to use the tabs. But what this setting does is it uh, it eliminates the tabs. And instead of the, in this case, blog articles being in its own tab, it'll be below the last part of, for example, the content in this overview tab. So it'll come after, again, in this example, company details. So let's um, re-enable this with the new setting, show all content without tabs. And we'll save the changes. And I'll refresh the page. So now what we've done is we've removed the tabs uh, here at the top. And it actually saves a few pixels there, probably about 50 pixels of height there. And as we scroll down, um, remember the company details, and now here are the blog articles uh, for this member here. So maybe it might be reviews or other types of content, but you can then see all the content by scrolling rather than going into tabs. And again, the SEO value here is uh, uh, ideally or, or theoretically Google uh, doesn't necessarily like hitting content. It's it's not a um, it's not an absolute thing, but it can it can tick the needle just a little bit if all the content is uh, displaying all at once on the, on the page. Now, if your pages are ranking well, uh, it, it probably won't make a difference. Or if the pages have good content in the overview tab, uh, that should suffice also. And, and you, you don't have to worry about using the tabs or not using them. Uh, so I think more uh, than the small SEO benefit is, is, is the aesthetic of how you like your pages, everything uh, nicely organized or allowing the visitor to just continuously scroll. Uh, which also could be a benefit on some mobile devices as well. Um, just continuing to scroll to see the content rather than switching between to, between the tabs. Um, if let's see if Jeff is in the webinar here, um, Jeff from Australia. Jeff, do you mind if I unmute your microphone? I know that you did this on your site. I know I kind of just I called him out of the blue here. There you go. How you doing, Jeff? Good, thanks. Uh, do you mind if I share your site? Because because you were kind of the inspiration for creating this simple setting. Because I know you kind yeah, of not not a problem. Good good. Myselfwest.com.au. Yeah. You know I'm using this this uh, test site. It's not very aesthetically pleasing, uh, but uh, your site's a bit more colorful. And where would I find this? Just any of the profile pages? Yeah, the, I've uh, done the. I don't load the pictures until you scroll on these. Okay. Um, so here's like the top section of the overview tab. And then as we scroll, we have other sections here. Here's your services section here as well. That would normally go into the specialties tab that you've now included here. Yeah. Okay. And um, if you go to if you go to just search for my southwest on 
Yeah, the bottom one. If you go into that, I've got a lot of content there. You can at least see that one. I'll just keep scrolling here. So you have a, a frequently asked questions and uh, reviews. Yeah. Very nice. And in this case, you've done a small uh, like customization. You're you're kind of uh, putting darker backgrounds to separate the the titles yeah. of the sections. That's a nice touch as well. And I've done blogs and articles and, and stuff like that. So great. Right, it's well, probably a bit much on this one, but certainly it shows it for sure. Yeah, this is a, a great example of uh, having the content without the tabs. All right, thanks for sharing, Jeff. Not a problem. All right, let's keep moving here. So that uh, setting is now available to you guys. This is this is actually a, a really good one. It's a the ability to now collect all your past due payments. You know, members' cards sometimes they don't work on a day. They they reach their spending limit. Maybe their card is expired and they simply need to update uh, their card on file. Uh, let me show you this example of how the one click uh, to collect all past due payments uh, works. Just give me a second here. Okay, great. So um, where you can go is into your transaction history tab. And if you have members, it's going to happen when it's when it when you have membership subscriptions over time. Uh, their monthly payments are not going to be able to to hit on the day that they're due. It could be their annual payments. For some reason, it could be that on the day they were due, the card wasn't valid. Uh, but if you you can attempt to bill it again the next day, uh, it can potentially process the payment. So prior to this update, uh, you could see your past dues. And under the actions link, you could, it will attempt to collect the payment, which is super helpful. Um, it's easy to identify how many past due invoices you have, what the total amount is, and how to how to be proactive to collect that uh, th those funds before too much time goes by. Uh, so before the process was fine, it was just a little manual. You had to go one by one uh, to each actions drop down and click on collect this payment. Uh, now there's this nifty checkbox here. Um, and you can check all the um, options that you want, and then you can just click this blue uh, button here, and it will just start running a process and attempting to collect um, all the transactions that you've checked. Um, at the end, after it's done processing, it'll give you a summary of how many successful payments it was able to collect, how many still remain past due, and the sum of the total uh, amount that was collected from all the successful uh, past due payments that were collected. So uh, this is just more of a quality of life feature to make things a little easier to do rather than going uh, one by one, especially if you have dozens and dozens of uh, potential members that could be uh, past due. This is a great way to just quickly try to attempt uh, and collect all the valid ones. Uh, and then the ones that are still past due, you can then take additional action. Maybe you want to call or email the members. It's always a great reason to engage with your members and, and find out if there's other services that you can assist them with on your website. So you always want to turn um, a problem into an opportunity, and it's a great way to uh, build more better relationships with your members. So that's the one-click uh, collect all past due button. Uh, super convenient there. Um, and then this one, uh, the ability, the last one I'm going to cover here in the lab updates is the ability to sort posts uh, by their published status. And we've seen a lot in the Facebook group that um, the website owners want to moderate all the posts that are published, the coupons, the articles, everything that the, that the members are publishing. Uh, the website owner wants to have the ultimate decision which ones get published and which ones remain unpublished. Um, and you can do that there. We talk about it a lot in the Facebook group about how to, by default, anytime a member saves a post, it's automatically set to a draft mode. It's not published, uh, but it's always been a little tedious uh, to kind of come into the admin area. Um, and this is, there's no posts here. Let me um, toggle over somewhere where we do have some example posts. And when you go into the manage content, manage posts area, and I'm going to get there right now being able to quickly sort which posts are published status and which ones are unpublished status. And those are the ones in draft mode that you can then uh, manually moderate and decide if you want to publish them or not. So we're in the content manage posts area. 
and we see a filter by status here. So let's go to member articles and let's filter by not published. Okay, in this case, everything is in a published state. Uh, let's actually set one, let's set two of them to unpublished. We can do a bulk update here. Okay, great. I'm just gonna refresh the page. And if we click back to member articles, so here we see all of them listed, the unpublished and the published ones. I'm gonna look for the ones that are not published only, and we can see that these two are here. Um, I can view the live page or I can edit it. Um, and as the website owner, then I can just like I did, uh, once I wanna approve them, I can go ahead and do a bulk action and set them to published. Uh, if I don't like what the, the post is, I can go ahead and delete it here um, and thereby providing an easy way to filter uh, posts that are in draft mode and publish mode. And then you as the website owner can take the actions that you'd like to take uh, to set to change the status. There were more lab updates. I'm going to save them for another webinar. I know that was a mouthful. Uh, feel free to have fun with some of these settings. Remember, these are I think these are pretty friendly and easy settings because you can easily enable them and disable them on your site. So you can kind of test out and see uh, what type of functionality you want to add to your site now that these features um, are available. And as soon as we have more info on the add-ons that are coming soon, I think in the next webinar we'll have a ton to share. Uh, we'll be sure to cover them there. So thanks for uh, joining us in the segment for BD Lab Updates, guys. All right. We have a great segment today in Rick's Corner, Simple Solutions for Common Questions. And uh, Rick, we have a special guest with us today again, Sherilyn. Welcome. Yes, we do. Yes, we do, Jason. So yes, welcome, Sherilyn. Super happy to have you again. I'm super happy to be here. Hi, Rick. <laughs> hello, hello. All right. So yeah, we're going to go over um, a, a very useful piece of, um, we call this like real estate that you can go ahead and edit. Um, again, um, the idea behind Rick's Corner is always show you guys what's available for you to edit. Um, uh, as we always mention, uh, BD comes with a bunch of stuff already set up for you guys. But if you want to take it one step further, this is the type of things that you can you can go ahead and do to give it a little bit more of your own unique feeling to your website. So what Sherilyn is going to do um, today is she's going to show us how to go over the uh, email signature. So whenever you're ready, Sherilyn, please go ahead. Yeah, and we're going to be going over the default um, website signature, so the one that the system email sends out. All right. And, yeah, we can see your screen very nicely here. Perfect. Okay. And in order to get to the setting, we need to go into the settings. <clears throat> Excuse me. Inside the general settings. And then we just have to scroll down a little bit. And then you'll see it right here, the default email signature. Um, so I'm going to just show you guys a quick example of a default website email. Um, and this is just like all the websites come like this. And I'm going to use the welcome email. So this is what you get. You know, and this is the signature. This part right here is the signature that comes included with all of the default emails. Um, I think we can definitely spice it up, making it a little more fun, more personal, get user engagement. So I, I think this is a great feature that a lot of people overlook, but you can do so much with it. Um, I love that you can upload photos. You can add links. I was saying that earlier you can use the space as banner ad space as well. You can tell your members, hey, for, you know, this month you can – I can go ahead and feature a banner for your business, for your listing, and it'll be sent out with certain system emails. So we're going to go over how to go ahead and end that. So we're going to go ahead and start here. And I'm going to start by adding my, my image, my personal picture. So I already, I already went ahead and uploaded all of these images into the media manager. So you want to make sure to go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead here and my image. It's huge. It's small. So it's that simple. You go ahead and click it. opens up the media manager, and you select the add button. Go ahead and add my name. Now, a good tip is if you're going to be using images in any email, whether it's your signature or uh, an image that's part of the email, uh, tr try to use um, 600 pixels or less or the actual image size that you want to use rather than shrinking the image down. Um, that way you know that you're, you have an image that doesn't have a lot of, uh, 
is, is going to load quickly and, and doesn't take a lot of memory. So we're just hopefully we're just talking about a few kilobytes rather than an image that's like three or four or five megabytes, uh, which would take a long time to load if someone is opening this email on their on their smartphone, for example. Yeah, and that's a great point. So, you know, I've got my plain text here, but you can do so much more with it. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the size, make it a little more visible, make this 18. This one can stay 14. I'll go ahead and leave this here. And I want to make it more fun, so I'm going to add some color. And then you just click on the little drop here, opens up the colors. So I'm going to pick, I like orange. So we have the, I've added some color. I'm going to go ahead and change the text as well. You know, text font size, perfect. And then below that, I'm going to go ahead and use this space to promote, let's say you guys have a Facebook group or, you know, a, a separate website where you do certain things. I'm going to go ahead and add this little image here so people are aware, you know, right when they're signing up, you know, we have a Facebook page available. It's for you guys. It's all about the website, um, you know, so that they know there's other resources than the site itself. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to add a little link here. You have the little link button. Go ahead and add my link here. And then I'm going to add a little call to action. I'm going to select open in a new tab. And I'm also going to make this just a little bigger, get some attention. And the elements that you're mentioning do play a big role. Um, and the, it's, it's important for the person that's receiving this type of communication to have easy access to mm -hmm. this type of information, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you want them to be aware of these things when they're receiving, like, you know, a crucial email, like the member, you know, account activation. So, you know, it's pretty simple. You can include anything else here. Um, and for the more advanced users, you know, who are, you know, familiar with HTML and CSS, you can go ahead and use the code view to, you know, really, you know, take this and, you know, take it to the next level. So we're going to go ahead and save this. And then I do want to mention that you do have to go into the email and set inside the email for it to display the email signatures. So... Here, I'm inside the emails, email templates, and I've already customized the one we're going to use. So it's going to appear under custom templates. Come here and select edit. Um, and if it's the first time you're doing this, you're going to come, same thing, actions drop down. But instead, you're going to select customize. So it's going to open that up into the same way um, the edit will for a custom template. So here we go. I've already done some work to the template itself. I've already, you know, made it my own. And I'll show you guys the finished product at the end. Um, but here, so we go into this little sidebar where it says include signature. By default, it comes with no. But we want to go ahead, switch this over to yes. Um, you know, we can save it. Include website logo, that's also a great option. You know, if you want to include the logo, typically when you select this, it'll include the logo at the top of the email. But if you want to add the logo in a different place, like let's say at the bottom of the email, you can go ahead and select that to no. So you have so much flexibility to just really make it into, you know, the design you want it to look. So in, in, so, this, in this case, you don't have to copy your signature. You just, just stop the email where you want it to end and select exactly. the include signature option there. So it'll kind of automatically insert the default website signature at the end of this email, for example. Exactly. So you don't have to worry about going into the templates, copying and pasting anything. The system's taking care of this for you. So it makes it super easy, super user friendly. Um, and so let's just revisit really quickly the default. This is the one though the website comes with, and this was the default signature on the, all of these. And then here I'm going to show you guys once it's been customized a little bit, you know, I've added custom text. This is what, where the logo appears by default when it's selected to yes at the top. I've added my, my own text, added some colors. Um, and then once we, you know, I've changed the, the font families. And then below here, we can see the signature. Got it. And in my opinion, I don't know, I just feel like if I was to get this email, it feels like it's coming from a real person, a real website. 
plenty of things to interact with. You know, you're getting to know who you're dealing with. I think that's, I, I, I love that. It says like website managers. It's even if, if a free member is signing up and, you know, there's a person welcoming them rather than just like the, the team, you know, it says like the team. Thank you, my new website team. Um, it adds, it's definitely more, more fun and playful and, and it adds a personal touch. Um, and also a stronger connection. Cause now you, I feel like if I got this from you, I mean, we're using your image as an example. There's other things to do, but I feel like you're my like account manager there. And I feel even more invested and connected to the company that just contacted me. Exactly. You just feel like you're a part of it. You're, you're getting to know who you're working with. It does feel like a, like a member community. That's right. That's, that's great. All right, Sherilyn. Thank you very much for that. That's all I really have for you guys this, uh, this week. Sherilyn, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Awesome guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thanks, guys. In the previous last two webinars or, or so, I think we did cover um, how to edit uh, welcome emails or, or how to welcome new members. And we talked about customizing some of the, the welcome emails that people receive or even the emails like after someone fills out a newsletter, a uh, sign-up form, uh, and something like that. This is a great way to add a personal touch. So you could you could add a you can custom build the signature right into the email template and not use the default uh, website email signature, but that makes it really convenient to just have that default signature in your back pocket. So if you are editing and customizing a lot a lot of email templates, um, you can just update the one signature. And you know maybe one month you're promoting your Facebook group and another month you want to promote something else, you only have to make the update in one place. You don't have to go to 30 different email templates and uh, and change them one by one. So there's definitely a convenience factor um, having utilizing that default website email address uh, and also using it not just as a sign-off, but as a marketing tool to, again, further engage people into using other aspects of your site. So I think this was a great topic uh, to cover this week, guys. So thanks for that. And let's just quickly see, um, let me lower anyone's hand. Does anyone have a question about the email signatures out there in the audience? You know, if you're going to use um, images in your emails, uh, one, try not to overdo it. The more images, the longer it takes to, to open the email. And someone might just, you know, if it's taking a long time, they'll just click out of the email and go to their next one uh, in their inbox. Um, all right, we got uh, another question here from Debbie. Debbie, how are you today? I'm fine. I have a question about when you send an email, um, is there a place where we can uh, see the history of the emails that we've sent out to everyone? I believe, let me just quickly uh, check one thing. Um, I do believe in the website activity log, there is um, an email here. Yeah, you can filter by email. And I think this is emails that the website has has sent out. Is that correct, Rick? Welcome emails and such? Yes, that should be correct. Okay. Alternatively, um, Debbie, the admin of the site, and let, let me explain what I mean by the admin of the site. Um, this email here, the default website email, um, does get a CC copy um, of all the emails that are being sent. So if you've set up um, a default website email address, um, you, you can access it from uh, your webmail. Um, you can also have these forwarded to like your personal email and create like a folder or a label. Uh, so any emails here kind of, they don't clutter your inbox. It's just something you can check on once in a while. Um, right, so, so that's like an email blast, right? If we send out an email blast to all the members, it would at least get one email copy to my personal email that I've directed it to go to. So if you're doing um, in a, new, a, a newsletter campaign, um, I believe you do get a, a very basic and simple report and it does include um, who, uh, who was actually, who had a valid email address and who the email was sent to. So I think when you're sending the newsletters, you do get a basic report of um, who the, the email was actually sent to. That would be a little bit different than those one-off automated emails that are going off like every time someone joins your site or subscribes to a newsletter or fills out like your contact us form and they get like a, a the, the email that says thank you for, for filling out the contact us form. Um, those one-off emails, I believe the admin is CC'd here, this default website email. And if you needed to, you could actually access this and see all the CC'd emails. 
Uh, you can also set up an email forwarder if you want to kind of capture them in another location. And that's all done at the actual email accounts, right? Yeah, so you can go to email accounts and um, – well, this is going to – that's going to ask me to connect a live domain, but in your case, you could set up an email forwarder. What you want to do, and I see this kind of mistake uh, a couple times, are, are two things. Like you, this could be whatever you want, you know, no reply or you know support. But what you want to make sure is that you've gone to your email accounts uh, under email accounts and actually created that name. You can create unlimited email accounts. You could do Debbie at you know your website, Jason at. No reply. Set that up and then alternatively set up an email forwarder now that this email is registered and exists. Uh, that way you can make sure that you know the, the CCs of all these emails are, are being captured uh, okay. somewhere. Or you could, again, once you set this up, uh, you do have the ability to log into the webmail and, and see all the emails uh, for this address here. Okay. Jason, great. that's super important. The fact that the account needs to be created first before using it or setting it up on that field is super important because if the account doesn't exist, the system will block that the uh, that specific email address. So if you add it there before creating the account and you try it out, like you test this out, the system will block that account that doesn't exist. And then when you try to create it, it's not going, not, not going to work. So it's important to respect that process. First create the account and then add it to the field. Gotcha. You just gave me, you know, we're working to kind of reduce user errors in this section here. Uh, you just gave me a, a great idea uh, for that, Rick. So um, that's thanks for sharing that tip. All right, let's take one more question about emails from our good friend Colette. How are you today, Colette? Hi, Jason. Good on you. Excellent. Thanks for joining us today. Good. Um, I'm setting up an email template to send out to um, my database. But I noticed when there's two issues. Firstly, um, the default email signature picture tends to come out very big when sent via the test email. Can we troubleshoot it real quick on your site? I'm, I'm interested to see myself. Yeah, sure. uh, what's your site again? Site is selwynconnect.co.nz. That's right. Yeah, might as well just take a second to look at it. Let's go to your email templates here. And what's an so example? The birthday that, one on, on the right called birthday. Okay. Um, and let me just edit it. Let's see what you've what you've done here, set up here. Okay. So okay, this this one's not showing. Uh, so you're saying you have the image in the signature. In the signature, yes. Okay. So this is good. Nice, straightforward email here. Good text. Let's check out the email signature. Okay, and I would like to just check something here in the code. I'll check this image out. Okay, so uh, this is this is a very large image here. Uh, what I would recommend is 600 is a good size. That's generally the the, the viewport, uh, the recommended viewport uh, for emails most of the time. Um, what I would recommend doing in this case, and there's other tools that you can use. Um, I, I use Photoshop. I'm just going to reduce this so the original size is that 600 pixel target that we want. Um, alternatively, what you can do also, so I'm just going to go to image size. Uh, so this the the natural width of this image is is 1400 pixels basically almost mm -hmm. 1500. Uh, so I'm just going to reduce it. It's going to keep the proportions. So this is our uh, image you now, and I, I like what you've done here. You know the owner and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and we'll save it as a JPEG. And generally speaking, uh, let's see the size difference. Yep. Yeah, um, so it's showing me this month how much the memory the size is going to be. I think that with this one we can do a high is, is fine, and we'll just call it uh, signature email short two. Go ahead and save that. Now let's go back to your site and as uh, Sherilyn recommended, let's go to your media manager and add the image to your media manager. Okay, 
So now we know it'll never be more than 600 because that's that's the original size of the image. So if we come back to your signature here, and what I'll do is, uh, well, I could just change this to two, I guess. There we go. And let's save the changes. And let's go back and let's send a, a test email here. And we could just send this to events at brilliantdirectories.com. Mm. And I see here we are including the, the website signature, and here it is here. So this looks mm -hmm. this looks correct here. Uh, this looks about 600 in the pre. And let's look at a preview email. So that looks about right as well. And we could look at the image info here. Oh, I don't think I'm going to get a reading on it. But this does look to be this the 600 pixels that we're looking for. So let's actually uh, send this out. Oops. I think I need to push enter. There we go. And we'll send that out. All right, we got the notification that it was sent. And let's just uh, see how that email gets received. Yeah, that looks great. That's that's what I was wanting. That size. Okay. Yeah, that that does look nice. So that was a good tip for everyone. Again, try to make your image sizes the the exact proportions you want. Potentially, you could go a little smaller than 600 here if you wanted to. Um, but I think this looks appropriate, and we know that we're using the minimum kilobytes for that image size. Um, also, Colette, one quick tip um, to make that image size even smaller. Um, what you could do is your contact info on there, you could put that in just as regular text and then use some CSS to style it, um, you know, if you want to change, like, the font of your name or something like that. And that way, the only image in your signature would just be your logo, and then that would also okay. reduce the file size a little bit. Okay. Good tip there. Okay, super. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks for showing us this. All right, good stuff there from Colette. Always nice to have you uh, in on the webinars with us. All right, um, let's keep things moving here. Thanks for that segment, Rick and Sherilyn. And we do have a website showcase uh, today. Correct me if I'm wrong, is it Lois or Luis? Uh, let me unmute your microphone here. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's Louise. Louise. All right. And uh, where, are you, where are you calling in from? Beachburg, Ontario. Okay. Well, uh, we definitely love Canada here at Brilliant Directory. So uh, thanks for joining us. And your thanks. site is uh, bookkeepersdirectory.com. Yes, it is. And are you a bookkeeper uh, yourself? Yes, I am. I've been a bookkeeper for a number of years. And this year I decided I needed to scale things up a bit. So I had connected with other bookkeepers for ideas, and through these connections, I found out about a lot of amazing industry-specific tools and resources, but they were hard to find online with doing searches and that. It was just word of mouth. So I thought, this is a perfect opportunity for a directory is to get them all in one location and, and also give a place for bookkeepers to, to promote themselves as well. All right. I'm going to open up my notepad here. Uh, so you brought up a, a few interesting points here. So uh, you want to create a resource where bookkeepers uh, can find tools and, and training and things like that, right? Yes. Yes. And then as we always talk about different audiences, uh, then you'd also like, you know, business owners to be able to find bookkeepers on this directory. Yes. Originally, it was just going to be a bookkeeper's directory, but um, I found it was really difficult to locate tools and resources for bookkeepers. So I thought the two would go hand in hand. Okay. Well, you're, you're, first of all, you're on a really good track here. Um, just quickly looking at the site, it looks like you are in the, the beginning stages of, of kind of setting this up here, uh, which is, which is perfectly fine. Um, but it's good. It's good that we're on the call here. So 
you know, um, when, when Matt and I, he's on the, the call here too, when we were creating our first directory about a decade ago or so, um, it was a directory for interior designers. And what we learned is rather than only being a directory for interior designers um, and, and consumers can find designers, one method for acquiring uh, designers that wanted to be members on the site is providing with them for them resources that help them be better at their business. Um, so it, it's a great way to attract the talent, the, the professional members to your site. And the phrase we used is that your website becomes, can become, and I don't want to spell bacon here. I don't know if there's a beacon of information uh, and value for the professionals. Yeah. Um, and and so what you what you have these tools and resources that are going to help bookkeepers be better bookkeepers, more efficient bookkeepers, um, and and you said they're hard to find, and you're trying to put them all in one place. Uh, so that's fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Exactly. I was surprised at how many tools and coaches there were out there for this industry. And like I said, they're they're very difficult to find online. All right. So you're curating um, again these these tools and making them readily available for the professionals. So there's definitely value uh, value there. And again, that allows you to become a beacon of information um, in the industry. Uh, it also allows you to um, gain some authority um, because through the value you're, you're providing. Um, yes. Now, um, also looking at this site, we always, when we're doing kind of the website reviews, um, we always want to make sure that although you're catering to both audiences, uh, for example, the you're trying to get the, the bookkeeper's attention, but you also want people who are looking for bookkeeper's attention, you don't want to co-mingle um, those, those things, you kind of want to keep them separate, uh, because okay. it, it dilutes the focus of uh, the site. It kind of confuses people when they come to the site. They don't know what the core focus is of the site. Um, and as David mentioned at the, in the beginning of this webinar, when we're talking about the proof of concept, which is, um, I guess what the, the I, I would recommend everyone, including, um, yourself, watch that video from the directory gurus and see exactly what they're talking about, proof of concept, and also which audience that we want to go after first, because your site's going to have multiple audiences. And, and as when we're just starting out, we have to choose one, and then we can branch off once we're doing a good job uh, with acquisition of the first type of audience. Um, so for me, what I'm seeing here is it, it would be easy to just create a bookkeeper's directory but there really isn't too much incentive for bookkeepers to start joining your site because, well, you, you can tell them, oh, promote your business, you know, get more online visibility. And, and that's pretty much it. You don't really have anything tangible that they could benefit from. Um, and that's where the resources come in um, to get the bookkeepers uh, to, for the bookkeepers to get access to the resource. So um, what I'm also thinking, and again, I'm just, this is just a stream of consciousness as I'm talking is I think it would warrant to get access to these resources that the bookkeepers at least need to register a free account on your site to unlock access uh, to the tools and resources. Okay. Um, with does that kind of kind of make sense at all? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering which angle to take because I wasn't sure whether to focus on bookkeepers or the resources. Um. But yeah, that that does make sense. Going into this kind of plan that you put together, I'm with you in that. I think it would be best to gear the front end of the website towards the customer, the business owner who's looking for a bookkeeper. Since ultimately this is a bookkeeper's directory, it's going to be the business owners who are looking for bookkeepers. So some of the, like the, the public articles on the site that you may want are how to find a good bookkeeper, what makes a good bookkeeper, uh, how can you trust the bookkeeper, with uh, your financial information, you know, articles like that. And then kind of on the back end, you can incentivize bookkeepers to register on your site by telling them that you'll provide them with these additional resources to help them with their bookkeeping business. But you can make all those pages private and only accessible to the bookkeeping members. And then you can like link to those resources or those pages 
in their member dashboard or something like that. Okay. That way it keeps, uh, it keeps the whole front end of your site very clean and simple for the business owner, the, the customer to navigate. And then also it, it kind of, it segments the two audiences pretty neatly, I think. Yeah, that would for sure. And, you know, I was checking out some, some websites, um, not necessarily identical to yours. Um, I was looking at, for example, uh, lending tree and I was also looking at, I think it was H and R block because they're tax specialists, right? Um, I, I wasn't necessarily looking for bookkeeper directories, but I was looking at what's the process they're using to kind of get, cause it's about the businesses that need to connect with these services. Um, right. So what I what I felt is, and it's not necessarily an, an app, but it's very like the options for the user are very simple here. You know, you, you come to this is the H and R Block website. You basically have a couple options to start filing with a tax pro or file online, and then you know there's some supportive text about why you should use the services. Um, you know, say hello to you know better bookkeepers. You could say right. Um, okay. You know, it's just supportive text, but this, the actions are the same. See, as I scroll down the page, I'm just presented with two options. When I went to, for example, Lending Tree, and again, if he has that like app-like feel, because all the user is doing is pressing buttons to continue right. the process. I guess that's what it is is just creating a system where um, until the user is actually putting in their name and, and email address, they're just pushing buttons, um, attractive buttons to get to the different sections of the site that are going to help them achieve uh, some goal um, at the end of the rainbow there. Uh, so this is uh, lending trees here. You know, they're, they're kind of asking you like, what do you want to do exactly? I'm looking for credit cards, insurance, and so forth. So when we come back uh, to your site, um, and again, because you're in the big beginning stages, you really don't have many places to direct uh, potential website visitors to. And David and I were actually chatting and we thought, and we've used this before, is maybe using the style that we use on the classified ads theme, which we use this uh, this uh, on lots of different uh, concepts when we talk about sites, is basically the two buttons on the home page. Um, because what we're trying to do is funnel the, the website visitor down a path to success. So whether we want them to find a bookkeeper or list their bookkeeping services, those are basically two paths we want a website visitor uh, to go down. Um, so as we were looking at your site, and again, because it's in the beginning stages, we thought that a two buttons on the homepage would probably be a little bit more value uh, than having people search because right now, uh, you know, you don't really have too many options. You're just kind of testing around and figuring out, you know, what, you know, what direction you're going to do for customer acquisition and things like that. Right, right. Um, so if you wanted to, we could do, um, I don't want to get too, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but what I'd like to do is just kind of put some of the building blocks in place uh, to kind of more, it's more conceptual. So you can start thinking about your site and in this type of format uh, and it'll give you some direction to move forward in and, and hopefully it'll crystallize more ideas for you as well. That's great. Um, if you don't mind, I can kind of just, dive right in here and, and, and make a few uh, changes. Yeah, go for it, please. Okay. Um, and David, if, if please, and Rick, if you guys have some ideas, just shout them out. I'm going to do just some quick things here, um, and we can see uh, where where this will take us. So, so Dave, you're recommending to still keep the like the homepage of the site um, focused on the, the company, right, looking for bookkeeper's services. Right. So like the tools and the resources um, menu links probably wouldn't be best because that might confuse those business owners okay. since ultimately those resources wouldn't be for them. Got you. We, we can have like one, one button or one call to action for the bookkeepers, the professionals, but everything else geared towards the, the we'll call them the consumer, right. the, the person looking for the professional. All right. Um, let's do this. I'm just going to start with the, the, getting the two buttons on there. So that's going to be in the design settings here. And it's always fun uh, to kind of go down this uh, path here. And that lagged a little bit, but that's okay. So we're going to go to the design settings homepage layout. I'm going to work it just a little bit quickly just for the sake of time here. 
and we'll scroll down and we're not going to use a search we're going to use the hero message with link and those two buttons we're lucky because we have a quick link uh, where you can kind of copy the code for those two buttons and there's some takes you to our support center with some uh, screenshots so I'll just copy the code here and do you have a slogan not yet okay um any ideas well, yeah um you know it's good that so so who who's looking for bookkeepers businesses or companies or individuals who's the that target audience usually businesses and companies okay and what's a problem they might be facing where they need to look for a new bookkeeper right now overwhelm um a lot of small businesses have tried to do it themselves for too long and they're they're busy with their own business. So they tend to find fall sometimes several months behind, even years behind. I got a buddy and he, I, I don't know why, but something about his business, he has a lot of turnover with bookkeepers, but when he doesn't have one, he's not as productive because he's having to, um, you know, send out the accounts receivables and payables and, and, and balancing all the, you know all the all the numbers at the end of the day when you know he's just, just basically needs to do sales um, himself. So it sounds like get the help you need um, yes. uh, from like trusted bookkeepers, right? Yes. You good with that, Dave? Yeah, yeah, it sounds good to me. All right. Now, what we're doing here is, and and this is a strategy. Is and I always I always see this. You don't want to you don't want to have a title. And again, I'm not. I know that you're in the beginning stages of your site, but you don't want to have a title where it's just like find bookkeepers. You want to if you're going to really connect, you need to strike an emotional chord with a potential audience. So this goes to strategy, guys. Find a way to make an emotional connection with the problem your potential customer or you know the person who's going to use your site might be facing. So I was asking questions like what why would why would a bookkeeper want to use I mean a, a business want to use this site and look how emotional uh, we got here so they're overwhelmed uh, they don't want to do it themselves so time is a problem uh, so obviously that comes down to kind of getting the help you need. So the more you can strike on an emotional chord the more the audience will know that you you understand their pain and they're in the right place to find help and a solution. Um, you know what Jason Actually, playing off of that with the the slogan of the website, instead of getting the help you need, how about save money with trusted bookkeepers? Ultimately, the last thing you want is for bookkeepers to cost your business money. And some businesses who are looking for bookkeepers, maybe they're looking because they have one who's not doing their job too well. Got you. So there you go. We can we can. No, that's a great suggestion. So we can continue with f figuring out what the right combination of emotional words are so I just added work smarter and save money with trusted bookkeepers um, so this is H&R block and they're saying filing feels better with with upfront pricing um, so they're they're promoting convenience um, no surprise just tax prep the way it should be um, so they're they're really making you feel like this process is simple and it's going to be affordable at the same time uh, so that's generally the uh, the pain point for most people when they're doing their taxes, obviously. Uh, so let's do this. Um, let's add the main title. And we'll do the two buttons. We'll do like uh, find bookkeepers. And then the second one would be um, bookkeepers. Kind of like list your services in a way. Um, let me just quickly save this and see where we're at. And I'll do, I'll keep the old site open so we can do like a before uh, and after situation. So you can even continue using this woman here. Uh, she's obviously, you know, wearing like corporate professional attire. Uh, she could potentially be a bookkeeper. Um, let me just uh, make this a little nicer with the colors. And we'll do a few other modifications and we'll be well on our way. Let me just open this up here. 
So Jason, I was going to mention the, uh, to, don't forget to include the Google Analytics so you can start tracking how your website is doing um, on the initial stages of your website. It's super important to set this up. You don't want to forget later on and waste all that time. So definitely keep that in mind. Yes. Um, have you set up uh, Google Analytics on the site by chance? Yes. Okay, good. It's always good to do those those basic things uh, nice and early. All right. Uh, we're going to add some more padding here at the bottom and at the top. And I'm just going to go wild here. I'm going to increase the font size to 60 just as a dramatic effect. All right, let's see what this looks like. Oops. There we go. Um, and then we have this here. All right, we can kind of get rid of the subheading here. Don't need it too much. And again, we can work on finding the right word combinations. It's implied that it's for bookkeepers. I would recommend adding the word bookkeepers back or something like that. But I'm just going to say list your services just so we can have the effect of the, the, uh, the two, the two uh, funnels that we want to uh, drive people down. And just so we get the buttons here on a, on a nice line. So work smarter and save money uh, with trusted bookkeepers. Um, this is just something fun I'd like to do is maybe get trusted bookkeepers on one line. I'm just going to add a line break there. And another thing I'd like to do is um, just the style now. Sometimes instead of using these rounded corners, it's like fashion. It's, it's in one year. It's out one year. It's out the other. I'm going to just make these uh, square corners rather than rounded corners. It'll add a little bit more of a sharp feel uh, to the site as well. So that's going to be under uh, design settings. And then it's over here in the additional settings. We'll go with square corners. and. Are you um, are you attached to the color scheme that you've selected? No. Okay. No, not necessarily. Okay. And this is the logo maker that you created with this, right? Yes. Okay. Let's let's uh, let's change. Let's just use another pre-made color set to start. Uh, obviously, you can modify this further. These are just great starting points uh, to get some. Uh, types of colors on your site. Let's go with uh, let's go with this one here. It's called Smart Consumer. Just nice uh, primary colors. And we'll refresh the page here. Just give it a second. All right. And. Let's do your logo, and then I'm going to dive into your main menu here. And then up, up here, this section as well. All right, so let's go to your logo. And let's just refresh this page. I had two tabs open. Your site is bookkeepers directory.com um, let's let's add the icon here let's do a leaf actually again you're, you're probably gonna get a professional logo made at some point and we can go a little smaller here uh, here's a small tip for people um, if you do these small brackets, small, you can do the dot com. Kind of, it makes it a little smaller. It's more of a stylistic thing. And what do you think a good slogan would be, uh, David or Rick, for the something a little different than the, what we put on the main page? Let's keep it simple. Save money with top rated uh, bookkeepers. Yeah, I was just going to say something along the lines of the of the wording that you are like the words that you want to rank for. Keep that in mind. Like it's, you can use this 
also geared towards like the SEO if you have a specific campaign, some keywords that you maybe want to rank for, stuff like that. Yep, these are until you upload like a an image logo. I think we covered this in another webinar. Uh, this is a great way to um, add uh, add keywords that you're kind of look you're looking to rank for. All right, so um, see this dot com is actually a little smaller than the other text. It's hard to see the save money with top rated uh, bookkeepers. Um, let's also do one more thing. Let's uh, change the background of this green to a uh, another color because the the green on green is is hard to see this this button here. So let's just change that so the homepage section order uh, search background. Let's just go with a more of a black color. I uh, like there a little opacity. There we go. Let's then go. Let's refresh. Um, oh, I didn't select it. How about there we go. Doesn't want to take that darker color. There we go. All right. Um, all right. Now let's work on your main menu. Now the thing about the main menu is just like these two buttons. We do want to keep it relatively uh, simple. Um, the advertise with us. Are you ready to start taking advertisers right now, Lois? No, okay. not yet. No. All right. So let's kind of eliminate some things that we don't need off the bat. Because also understand the more main menu links you add, inherently you're adding more pressure on yourself to kind of build out those pages um, get the forms working and, and you have, there's a, you know, every section you add to your site, it's just, it's just more work and more things to manage. So the more we can edit out and stick to the foundational proof of concept elements, uh, the easier it's going to be to get this off the ground and get users and then uh, get that, that very valuable feedback so we can then make decisions on maybe people are asking that they want to advertise. We can build out that section. So I'll go ahead and, uh, go to the main menu here. And uh, it looks like this this was from the demo site that got copied over. I'll just kind of delete these links here uh, using those pages. Oops, don't want to clone that. All right, advertise with us is gone. Um, I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to create one link that says tools for bookkeepers. And we're going to do something clever. The tools for bookkeepers link is actually going to link to the sign up page where they have to sign up to get access to the tools. You could create a little landing page and says, Hey, don't miss out on these important tools by also registering. Um, we'll also, you know, feature your business in our bookkeeper directory. So now you're just giving them super value just for that, the free sign up registration. Um, Again, because that will help you more rapidly acquire customers. And, and if everyone, anyone watches Shark Tank, customer acquisition cost is, is what makes or breaks uh, most businesses. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to – do you watch Shark Tank by any chance? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, lots of fun. Um, so tools for bookkeepers. And I'm just going to do a, a little style thing here. It's a uh, thing I can do. Uh, button danger. These are just the different button classes that we have that are part of your theme. And let me save this. And Can you just uh, fix belly on bookkeepers? Yeah. Put two Ks, right? Okay. okay. And with that, what we can do is just remove the, the join us link. And again, you know, just keep this in mind, guys. Who are you asking to join your site? Are you asking the general consumer? Like, you really need uh, a deliberate and and uh, call to action. You got to know who you're speaking to. So, just saying, join us uh, really doesn't 
mention who you're talking to. So if a consumer goes to that, the membership plan page for bookkeepers, they're going to get confused potentially and think that, that they're on a site that's only for bookkeepers. Uh, so just, just kind of uh, be aware of the terminology you're, you're using. Um, so resources, those are going to be the ones for the bookkeeper. So I'm just going to kind of delete that as well. Uh, now here's 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 what you can have is um, you could have a um, bookkeeper. I like this phrase like pro match service. Okay. Uh, bookkeeper pro, and then you could do like um, uh, bookkeeper directory and this would go to your get matched page and this can go to could go to your categories page we're going to talk about your categories next and then we'll, we'll look like the before and after um, so let's refresh this okay so if you notice here now, I have this in red, the tools for bookkeepers, uh, bookkeeper a pro match service and a bookkeeper directory. So you got just a few main menu links here. Um, you really could also get rid of the home link because um, that's normally implied that the logo takes you to the home page. Um, and you could even have a page like um, you could do the how it works and go to your about page now I would recommend kind of building out these pages a bit more um, all right and that should fill up your main menu a bit here it looks nice I'm just gonna say bookkeeper matching service all right so With that said, um, I'm not ready to do the before and after just yet. So find a bookkeeper. Um, so this is going to go to uh, your Get Match page. Um, we do have – I'm going to share the link to, to create a better landing page here. Um, it's in our Documentation Center. I'm just going to Google new page. Here you go, lead magnet page. So it's going to allow you to kind of create a page like this. I don't, this wasn't the exact one I was thinking of, but I'm going to share this link nonetheless. It's going to allow you to just kind of create these like tools. This would be great, the one for tools for tools for bookkeepers. And you create a page that looks like this. Um, you know, I think it's actually a page that looks like this. Scroll down. That was the thank you page. So, you know, it's a form or it could be just benefits and links to the sign up page, but it's basically a way to create a landing page that gets people excited about the service. And then you, you take them to the, to the registration page or, or the one action that you want them to do. And that's going to help with rapid customer um, acquisition or member acquisition. I'm just going to uh, put this in the chat here. You can read these articles. And we also have, if you search our Brilliant Directories blog, just search for like lead magnet or um, landing page. Uh, you'll find more articles on how to kind of spruce up some of these uh, the pages so they're just uh, a little more attractive. So bookkeeper matching service, bookkeeper directory. So what I'm doing is I'm linking to your categories page, bookkeepers by category. Um, and you have some good categories here. What I did notice, the webinars and the resources for bookkeepers you set up the categories as as if they were going to be members. Um, these would probably be better as premium posts that only registered bookkeepers, member membership levels, uh, would have access to. And and okay. and and for that, you want to use our um, the members only content add-on. And there's a video on this page, so I'm going to also share this. If you watch the video, you'll understand how you can set up the resource pages like the webinars or whatever tools that are only for the bookkeepers um, and, and just limit that content using the members only add on. And, and the video is right here on the side. You could just, you could just click it, but I'm going to share this link here in the chat. And um, 
So what you can then do further is just really have, and you don't need a lot. I, I also like to make this page full width. I'll go ahead and do that for you. It's just a personal preference. Uh, sorry, no sidebar is what I want to do, actually. It's a little bit nicer uh, when you come to this page. And also, let's let's disable banner ads for now. But I do want to say, banner ads are great. Imagine if it was a link of the banner ad to your matching service page. So then you have, you know, your banner ad assets kind of working for you internally. It's not about selling ad space just just yet. Um, okay. And again, you, you just have to create the graphics for those, and, and you would upload them here in the banner ad design section. But just for now, um, again, we're in the early stages. We'll just turn off all the banner ads on your site for now. Uh, so we have a bookkeeper directory. Um, this makes sense to me, like cloud bookkeepers, QuickBooks professionals. I, I can see how a business would know what they need uh, with this. Um, so let's keep it that. How it works, this is just the standard how it works page, but I would recommend trying to make something awesome using like nice graphics and images uh, and things like that. And and just like Sherilyn was adding images to that website signature, uh, you can do the same. It's a similar editor to for these for these pages, uh, it doesn't get too complicated. It's pretty simple. But if you're using good text, you know some maybe using big font for for like the title font, and the, and uploading images accordingly. Uh, you know the pro professionalism of the page should take care of itself. You don't really need to do anything too fancy. Um, and then tools for bookkeepers. Uh, you know right now this is going to the sign up page. Um, what I would recommend doing, and, and I know Patrick is an advocate for this too, is get them to register for free. And after they register, that's when the sales process, as far as getting them on a paid membership level, starts. So get them to register for free. Give them the access. In the welcome email that you can edit, tell them all the other ways that they can promote their services on your website. But at least you've got them registered for free. You're reducing the, you're eliminating the hurdles and maybe set yourself a goal like maybe after a hundred signups, then offer a paid option is like a spotlight or a featured option um, that, that gives those paying members more, uh, more visibility on your site. So is it, would it be okay with you if just for now we limited this down to one option? No. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. And again, it, it's just to get your foot in the door. Once they register, you know, you can then send them all sorts of materials and media kits on how they can kind of get more involved in the community. Um, you know, you could reward them for writing articles like tips, like bookkeeping tips and, and have them be the content writers for you uh, eventually. So let's go to your uh, toolbox and menu manager and pricing page menu. All right, so I'm just going to delete these. It's asked me if all sublevels too. Those are all like the, this is like the parent, and these are like the children in here. So we're just going to delete all of that. And now is the most important part. Now is the most important part because, again, I recommend making a more like, uh, more official landing page that really sells them on registering but for now we can use this one sign up form so just to keep things simple um, now all we have to do is write supportive text that's going to want to motivate a bookkeeper to go ahead and and create or join join your site right yeah. um, so let's let's start with the title text here uh, this is a place we also want to make an emotional connection like it would be a good place to say like want to give yourself an edge or you know looking for ways to work be a more efficient bookkeeper um, you know access hundreds of bookkeeper tools and and resources um, uh, do you know what puffery is it's a it's a legal term no okay it's like saying like we have the best ice cream in the world like there's no way to like qualify that it's 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 it's, it's just called puffery um so you can see like join the fastest growing um 
bookkeeper uh, or keeper community. That's fine. All right, let's just see what that looks like. So again, this is just conceptual. You can obviously go in and change it. Um, and the idea here is to mo give them give them more. It's not just list your business, right? It has to be something more than just list your list your services, list your business. Because there's a thousand and one, there's a million and one websites where a business can put their name, phone number, and link to their website. So in order for your membership community to stand out it needs to be a membership community it needs to have a mission it needs to have something it stands for besides giving you a name and a phone number and and a link to your website um, per se um, so the next thing is um, the name of the free account that we want to that we want to offer to bookkeeper bookkeepers um, it doesn't have to be anything uh, too fancy let's go back to the toolbox the menu manager and the pricing page. And you know, you could do things like honorary member, right? Honorary member. So or 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 give give it something more value than, you know, basic and platinum and silver and gold. Those work fine, I think more when you're established, but uh, when you're first starting out, you kind of want to find a way to label your membership levels with things that are going to uh, resonate with them. And we see this a lot with nonprofits. We have angel investors, diamond investors, um, even even with uh, uh, credit card points, right? What you want to do is kind of make them feel like they're getting more than, again, just like a basic listing. Um, let's let's see if we just by calling this honorary member. And again, I just came up with that in my, my head. Um, so we can actually do even more. Let me increase the width of this, uh, just from four. Become an honorary member. Let's just see what that looks like. It's more of a statement, like because it's, now it's a call, call to action here. So now we got a little more width here. And again, this is all conceptual, but it's just to give you a little bit of direction. Um, so now here we can list what they're going to get, right? And based on what you said at the beginning of this conversation is you're really keen on providing um, resources. So some of those resources are um, bookkeeper um, software. Obviously, you're going to be just recommending software lists, right? Um, Efficiency softwares. Um, accounting software. Okay, so those would be the business, but they would be I get access to. Um, okay, let's do exclusive software lists, right? Yes. And then, what is the training? Can you tell me a little bit more about this training? There's various training webinars on uh, efficiency systems, on accounting software, on industry-specific um, books, for example, like specific to contractors or specific to realtor, realtors, that sort of thing. Okay, so premium. Uh, bookkeeper, we'll call them just premium training webinars. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to go down the whole list, but I want what I want to do here. My goal is, it's not just about third and search results and and list in one category and the ability to upload your logo and your profile photo. You know, those those are kind of okay. What you the the benefits that you want to those are more settings what you want to show on your pricing pages are the benefits and the features of joining and and the features I don't again I don't mean listing upload your profile photo upload your logo upload your phone number upload uh, coupons upload deals this and that we want to touch on a, as many emotional cords as possible we want to get them excited about the access that they're about to receive um, so I'm just going to put a few of these here and excuse the spelling, you know, I'm just kind of doing this a little quick. You know, we don't want to use X's here. We want to fill them up all the way. Okay. Because we're not comparing plans. There shouldn't be anything. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. So let me just 
so again, I can't come up with all of them now, but and you can even reduce them. Maybe just have five or six. Actually, let's do that. Let's remove half of them. You know, if someone's just signing up for the free benefit, they just need five or six reasons to join um, for free. They don't need 20. Uh, in fact, 20 might confuse them. <laughs> when someone's on this on a sign up page, you want to try to eliminate, minimize doubt and decision making time. And part of that is just having shorter and simpler sign up forms. So look, if you could just come up with maybe two or three more, just fill these in here. I think you, it'll okay. be a home run. Uh, and again, you, again, you can change the supportive text. So now become a member. Um, we just have to, just because we changed it there, we actually have to just change this here. So um, let's change the name of the basic plan to, we'll just stick with the theme of honorary member right now. Because that's on the sign up page, we actually have to change the basic level here. I'll, I'll just keep it as honorary bookkeeper member and save the changes. And um, something interesting I'm going to do here. A lot of people say, how do I change this create profile here, right? Let me show you how you do that. So a couple things. Uh, you can go here to your content and go to SEO templates. Template is something that's used over and over again. So your sign-up pages are used over and over again. The only thing that changes is the membership level you're signing up to. So that qualifies it as an SEO template. Um, in this case, we want to go down oops, to your checkout page, last one here, and we're going to edit this. And here is your title, create. It's using a variable called listing and then the name of the subscription. So we're going to just change this to member registration. All right, because that's really what it is, is member registration. And if we refresh this page, oh, I didn't save the basic level, did I? I don't think I saved that basic level. Let's go back. Oh, I did. Oh, that was a different basic level you have. You had two with the same names. Okay. Let's change this. Honorary bookkeeper. All right, so now member registration, honorary bookkeeper. Now let's do something, one one more fun thing here. Um, if you recall, and I'm just trying, clicking around, I have a lot of tabs open. Remember I used those small brackets for your .com? Yes. Here's another fun place you can use that is for member registration. And put it here. Just to close it, you just add a forward slash there, and that kind of closes that. And now if we refresh this, it's a little more styling here. Member registration, honorary bookkeeper. So now people are going to come and register. Um, let's change this. Now we ha now we know. Let's change this to tools for bookkeepers. And then we're going to okay. wrap it up here soon. So we'll go to design settings and we know we're going to send them to this page, the join page. Okay. Here's the buttons. And insert link. This is like the most, coding we've done here is in this section, but we that, that article here, the button example code, kind of explains what all this stuff is. So hopefully it's not too intimidating. And we'll send the, the other one to the categories page, again, just tentatively for now. And we'll go ahead and I want this to be dangerous well. So two red buttons and we'll save the changes. All right, so I mean, I can go into like this section up here also, but just for the sake of time, I'll, I'll just pause there. Um, so I hope this, I know I kind of took over here, but I hope this gives you a little bit more direction, but more importantly, simplifies some things for you. Yeah, it does. It's mostly the direction I was 
was kind of confused as far as which direction to take with it, whether to go to resources or bookkeepers or, but yeah, I like the way it looks there now. And uh, so now makes sense. really what you're, ch the only real challenge is these few pages that we're keeping, you just have to make them look awesome. So maybe, Again, this it looks like this is like one of your first project with brilliant directories. We do have documentation to create nice landing pages. You know, if you just put a little bit of, of time into just these few pages and making sure everything is a nice flow. And I, I like how you already started putting things on the home page. Um, you're, you definitely got the right direction. But I think the where we want people to go is a little clearer now. Uh, I think we could look at the original site as, as we were here. Um, and now, again, I, we can even play with the colors more and things like that. But we've definitely simplified uh, some of the things that are here. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. All right. Um, that did go a little longer than, than I wanted to, but I just wanted to make sure it was kind of thorough for you. So I really appreciate you uh, sharing your site with us here today. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate your help. Uh, all right. Our pleasure. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, so, yeah, just just lesson here is try to keep things simple. You know, I really didn't do anything complicated with with coding and, and things like that. Just those two buttons there. And if I just had more time, like we could really just make this look like just with with the colors is making it look like a million dollar website almost. And, uh, you know, her task now is very simple. It's just the few pages that we're going to keep is making sure they're awesome using high quality images, really good and smart, supportive text. We always want to strike an emotional chord uh, with our potential members, and it should be genuine. You should have a genuine mission to want to help both the visitors of your site and the professional members that are trying to list their services uh, in your site. So I hope we all learned a little bit here with, with this really nice example. And again, thank you, Lois, for uh, sharing your site with us here. You have a great domain name, Bookkeepers Directory. It's just going to be a matter of time before Google uh, picks all that up. Yeah, and going real quick back to uh, Patrick and Bruce's uh, first part in their directory gurus thing. If you all noticed, if you, once you first have that target audience figured out, it really makes the whole website design process a lot easier. Once you know who you're speaking to, you can get the correct pages up, the correct text up, all that stuff. Everything kind of starts to fall into place once you have that initial target audience figured out. And, and part of that is just having a conversation with yourself. You saw those few questions that we were asking in the beginning, David. Um, you know, it just just answering a few few honest questions to yourself can really help guide you in what the the fundamental building blocks of your site should be that you should include in your uh, initial proof of concept. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, on behalf of myself, uh, Sherilyn. Uh, David and Rick, thank you guys so much for joining us on this webinar Thursday. Uh, we'll be back to our normal Wednesday schedule in two weeks. We'll be back to webinar Wednesdays. Um, and if you haven't already done so, please join our Facebook group. You can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook, and we can continue the conversations there. Have a great and productive week, guys. Catch you next time.